Morning, everyone. Isn't that unreal? We sang a song earlier with free indeed in it, and I'm talking about free. Free, we all like the word free. We love things that need to do with free. For example, buy two, get one free. Buy three, get the third one, cheapest three. Uh, sometimes, oh, don't you still have Wacky Wednesdays? Do you? Buy one, get free. Uh, you get 10% free extra on packaging, containers, boxes, 15% more free, 25% more free, and also you get sometimes 50 grams more free. We all love it, enjoy it, and we do those things, we go for it. Free is actually enjoying personal decisions. Every day of our lives we are making personal decisions. We don't even realize half the time that we're doing it, it's automatic. We wake up in the morning, we decide, should I get up or should I have another five minutes? We're continuously making these decisions. We don't even realize it. And we're free to do that. Should I get up and have some coffee or tea? No, I choose tea or coffee. It's free. You can do that. And it's, it's so amazing how we do this all the time. Every day we do things all the time and we don't know we're in doing it. We're free to decide. We could decide, could I come to church today or must I not go to church? I'm so glad you all said the right thing. Anyway, now there's been a lot of songs over the past years about bands who sing with the word free in it. There's been the Beatles, Tom Petty, uh, Kings, uh, John Zaccarda, Matt Monroe, a whole lot of guys just sang with free in it. There was even a band called Free, a rock band in the 70s called Free. And of course you all know our favorite Christian band, Free Indeed. Uh, I was a big Elvis fan. And in the movie, Journalist Rock, Elvis sang, I want to be free like a bird in a tree. And also one of my favorite songs was Queen's, I want to break free. Now, think of this. We are free to make decisions. A lot of us have been married. Those who haven't been married, you've actually been to a wedding and you've seen what happens at a wedding. You get the minister, pastor, priest, whatever his designation is, he does the ceremony, and he comes to the part, do you, Jack, Jack Jill, to be my lawful wedded wife, to have and behold, to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that, through sickness and health, richer and poorer, and everything, everything, and till death you depart. Wow. That's quite a commitment to make, isn't it? All those things. Now, what if I get married for 60 years? I'm going to have that, do all that for 60 years. But we are free to decide what to say at that time. Do we not turn around to the minister and say, excuse me, Mr. Minister, I, this is quite a hectic uh, contract that I'm going to say this to. So can you put some T's and C's that apply to this thing? <laughs> but no, we don't. With like good little boys, we stand there and say, I do. Now, okay. I was born and raised in the Catholic Church, and as you all know, some of you might know, when you in the Catholic Church, you baptize at an early age, maybe three, four, five weeks old. Now, what do you know about it at that time? What do you know about making the decision then? You don't know, because all you know is that you you, you, you're born in the Catholic faith, you come from a Catholic family, and this is a tradition to baptize you at that early, early age. And all you, I mean, I don't even remember this big hand coming towards me with this water and pouring it over my head, because that's what the priest does. And, but then you go through life as a Catholic, and at the age of seven or eight, you have the confirmation. It's actually confirming that you were baptized way back when. And that's what you do. It automatically happens. Now, I was a Catholic all my life, born and raised in the Catholic Church. I was a good boy. There, stop smiling. <laughs> and I, um, I was an uh, altar boy. I even became a grand knight. And guess what? I was so into the Catholic Church, I wanted to become a priest. I wanted to become a priest. Then Elvis Presley came out, I changed my plans. <laughs> and I still remained a Catholic um, most of my life until about the mid to late 20s. 
And I don't know if you remember Archbishop Dennis Hurley. Dennis Hurley was the head of the Catholic Church in Natal. And I went to Morris Brothers School up here at the road. And he used to come to our school every few months and talk to us and address us. And I got so, he, he was my hero. I looked up at him big time. I thought he was such an amazing guy because he was head of my church. And then as time went on, he got involved in politics. And I thought, well, every time he opened a Sunday Tribune, there he was talking about politics. And I don't, I don't agree that if you're a religious man or a politician, he's combining the two. And I, I, wasn't, I wasn't happy with this. Anyway, so I got annoyed with him. I went to see him, had an argument with him. I hit him with my tennis racket. <laughs> I, I, didn't do, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. <laughs> but I did ultimately leave the Catholic Church. <laughs> now just think of it. If Jesus gives us a command, are we free to decide, yes, I can or I won't or not? Think of this now. Jesus was at the Last Supper table with the disciples. He sat there and he knew what was going to happen. He was going to be crucified, beaten to death, and die on the cross for us. And he knew this, and he said to the disciples, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Is not, that not a command? Then he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me, in remembrance of me. I believe that that's a command that we should obey, and I believe that one of the reasons why we're here today is to take part in what we're going to do for him. Thank you. Please come forward.